The Titanic may have hit an iceberg after being diverted off course by space weather. This is what a new study claims. Now, we know that the Titanic was uh, sunk during its maiden voyage, April 15, 2012. It was an English ship, and it may have hit the iceberg after being diverted off course following intense space weather, according to a shocking new study find. In 1912, the Titanic was on its maiden voyage from Southampton to New York City. It hit an iceberg, causing it to sink. More than 1,500 people lost their lives in what remained the, the worst commercial maritime disaster. But scientists are still trying to discover what happened, how this... Uh, Shipwreck happened. The captain of the ship, Edward Smith, got it so wrong. Now, I remember when I was coming a very long time ago from England to Canada, we took a ship. We took the Queen Elizabeth II, and uh, we did see icebergs because we were going towards crossing the Atlantic over towards Iceland, and we did see icebergs. Amazing thing to see. Anyway, a new study could shed light on what happened claiming that a huge solar flare may have led to the disastrous crash. Now, how could this lead to a crash? Mila Zinkova, an independent researcher from the U.S. who is a retired computer scientist, claims there is evidence of strong solar activity on that night, the night that the Titanic sank, April 15, 1912. According to Zinkova, a huge solar storm could have caused the magnetic compass to point slightly away from the magnetic north, and thus could have led the boat on its disastrous course. So, that's what could have happened. This strong solar activity causing the compass to malfunction, changing its uh, uh, course. Now, what is uh, what could have, could have interfered with the Titanic's wireless transmission system, of course, that could have also happened, which likely blocked the captain's distress signals from reaching, other vessels. This is what she claims. She wrote in the journal Weather, she says, the Titanic struck an iceberg at 2340 ship time on April 14, 1912, UTC 310, April 15, in light winds and a relatively calm sea state. The Titanic's fourth officer, Joseph Boxhall, worked out the ship's SOS position. Boxhall's position was around 13 nautical miles off their real position. As you can understand, they thought they were somewhere else from what they, they actually were. Obviously, it's because perhaps this solar storm caused navigational uh, differences. Their compasses were wrong, and they thought they were somewhere else. The rescue ship Carpathia received this wrong position, but somehow miraculously stream, streamed uh, directly to the Titanic's lifeboats, both the error and correction may have been caused by the effect of space weather. This is amazing, isn't it? Now, she goes on to say, it's considered here that a significant space weather event, in this instance, a geomagnetic storm, was present during the period around the Titanic's disaster with some impacts upon navigation and communication. She goes on to explain a negligible compass error, which might have resulted from the storm, could have placed the Titanic on the collision course, she means with the iceberg. The geomagnetic storm might have been partly responsible for the incorrect calculation of the Titanic's SOS position in both direct and indirect ways by influencing the compass and by adding to the stress level of the navigators who performed the calculations. So if Titanic's compass error were only 0 0.5 degrees, she would have been off her course for around nine, uh, over one kilometer of the run, or around nine minutes over not one kilometer of the run. This apparently insignificant error could have made the difference between colliding with the iceberg and avoiding the iceberg. Now, eyewitness accounts from that time state there were auroras in the skies. So obviously to be that far, this, she, they probably took the same... Uh, obviously, they must have taken the same course that I did, that we did. I was eight years old at that time. Okay, as I told you, I, we took a ship from Liverpool to New York, to uh, actually we were going to Montreal, because I lived in Canada before the United States. 
So it was from Liverpool to Montreal. And uh, okay, similar to the Southampton to New York City route. And obviously it, the ship goes around up to North Atlantic. And uh, we, as, we, as I told you, I did, we did see icebergs. They called us out to go and see them on deck. Um, a be big, beautiful ship. They even had movie theaters. They even had uh, kindergarten playroom areas. It was just beautiful. Uh, anyway, I remember one of the movies I saw, which I liked, was a cowboy movie. You know, robbing a train or something. <laughs> I guess. And we had free movies as well. So anyway, um, anyway, uh, obviously they saw auroras, which includes the aurora borealis and northern lights. And they're caused when magnetic particles unleashed from the sun, sun collide with Earth's magnetosphere, creating the, gra the dazzling green, blue, and uh, uh, ver various colors glowing over our heads. Titanic survivor and author Lawrence Beasley described the Northern Lights in his account of the disaster. He said, we were not certain of the time and were eager perhaps to accept too readily any relief from darkness only too glad to be able to look each other in the face and see who were our companions in good fortune to be free from the hazard of lying in a steamer's track invisible in the darkness. But we were doomed to disappointment. The soft light increased for a time and died away a little, glowed again, and then remained stationary for some time. The northern lights it suddenly came to me, and so it was. Yes, yeah, so he obviously, one of the survivors, uh, did... Uh, claim that they had northern light, so they, this could have ha had most most likely been the cause of the disaster, the effect that it had on its uh, instruments, and this is exactly what they state now. I mean, northern lights can have, of course, changes in the uh, in fact um, affect your GPS and whatever. Uh, now, um, we know that what happened because of that uh, terrible uh, catastrophe is that. They didn't have enough light, light boats, lifeboats on the ship, and that's what changed in uh, maritime law. From then on, all ships had to have enough light boats, lifeboats to um, save the lives of all on board. So that was a big uh, change between uh, the time of 1912, the Titanic disaster, and after that. From then on, all ships going to sea or all, all ships sail must have enough lifeboats lifeboats to save the lives of all on board. This is by Sean Martin, Express UK. Please leave your comments. Thank you. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on, not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenge families here in Athens, Greece, in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.